at the end of the presentation. And you can send the questions via the web to of GoToWebinar. And my lovely colleague uh, Francesca is with me today. And she will collect all of the answers and will receive them to me afterwards. So after that, we will have a short break about 10 to 15 minutes. So I'm going to prepare myself for um, the second part of the presentation. And we have a program. So um, we are ready for as I said, to see our group for today. And um, she has a really uh, recorded journey to do on uh, her leg, and we are going to treat that. So that's a perfect example for um, the fuse switch treatment of the jury movie today. So uh, now I'd like to switch to the presentation mode of our announcement presentation, and you will be able to see me um, during the presentation. And as I mentioned, you can ask uh, Francesca all of your um, appearing questions during the presentation while the check uh, function. And I hope today everything's going to work with the uh, IT department. And um, yeah. yeah, I say enjoy and let's go on. It's not. Uh, it's not. So, I'd like to introduce um, the new student of the art, Christmas Glazer, from our Christmas family. As you all know, we have a long tradition now, over 20 years of experience with Christmas lasers. And um, you also know that we have um, our family of, um, of the two star, the star of the movie star in 1998. And uh, this is what's going to proceed to um, the to 20, so 2019, we had um, the launch of our new Pickle Star. So, what we were thinking about placing uh, a new fuel switch uh, device to the market was that a lot of doctors are very used and uh, really experienced with fuel switch laser technology. And uh, we thought, well, of, of course, we are really convinced about our Pico second laser, our Pico star, and we know that this is um, a great addition to Q-Switch laser family, and it's very um, well accepted yeah. in the market. But we also have the other side, of course, and also in Asian countries, they love to use nano uh, second lasers, and they're very used to do Q-Switch treatments. And so we thought about why not using this very well-known technology and adding some new features to it. And this is the reason why we meet today. And no. uh, I'd like to show you all so the new features so of this great new device. So, I know, um, we are able to um, fulfill a new state of the art in the tattoo laser market to add this to the tattoo laser market and uh, we have the possibility to treat a lot of varieties of patients with use switch laser technology so we have our uh, perfectly um stated nanostar here um in the middle you can see that no, you don't see that. I'm sorry. Yes, again, it's live, so I don't know. 
Okay, okay. So you can see that um, we have our nanoster here. So we have um, the different details of the technical data um, of the device. So it is uh, a Q-switch laser with uh, an Ruby and NDX source of a class four laser. We have three different wavelengths, so 694, 532, and 1064. So uh, it is a frequency doubled uh, NDX. And uh, we have um, the different maximum fluences on the left, parts duration, the frequency, um, and the different spot sizes. In fact, we have uh, different spots for different indications mm -hmm. and also for fractional treatment. So uh, we are able to um, do a lot of treatments with a lot of indications for classic tattoo removal, also for skin rejuvenation, for melasma, for all kinds of pigmented lesions, um, and also for uh, classic um, ah! yes, uh, acne scars and, um, and just, you know, uh, the better appearance yeah. of the skin. So we have, in fact, the Q-switch mode. We have an OptiPulse mode. I will come back to that later. A phototermal mode, a deep fractional mode, and the high coverage mode. And this DF and high C um, HD um, hand pieces are both fractional hand pieces. Unfortunately, I don't have the fractional hand piece today. So uh, for the fractional ones, it will be just um, a theoretical part today. But uh, we can do uh, another presentation later. Uh, this year to introduce you better to the two fractional hand pieces. So we go on with uh, the features. So I hope you can see that. Yeah, it's perfectly working. Good to know. So we see um, the experience and the features, so you know, um, I've already mentioned that we have a lot of experience with Q-switch laser technology, and here we have a new device. Um, so it's basically a new momentum of uh, the past combined with a new features of the future. So um, you can see here on the right, I'm sorry, a little uh, interruption for IT department, so yes. Are we going to work? No, it's not. So, I'd like to apologize, uh, to do my apologies for that. So, can I proceed? What, just a moment. So, perfect. I'd like to see my screen. Okay, I'm back again. So we were talking about um, the features. So we have with the new device, um, a new high energy and speed level. 
we have an opti beam and mixed technology i will come to uh, back to that later we have uh, automatic spot size detection which is really easy and comfortable during the treatment for the operator so you don't have to calibrate um, all the time we have numerous uh, hand pieces um, so uh, we have different spot sizes and the different fractional hand pieces for different indications we have um, plug and play technology and a really nice guided user interface so when we talk about uh, the market for tattoo removal you can see that we have um, alone in germany eight million people with, uh, with tattoos and uh, this number is increasing every day uh, in france we have about six millions and in the us we have about 45 million people with tattoos um, so there is a huge market for laser treatment and um, we have around uh, 200 euros per laser treatment and um, every 15 minutes um, there will be seven laser treatments um, so there is um, a huge turnover uh, per hour and um, also for patients so this is a very um, useful market for you as well so um, we also have a big market for for picosecond lasers and for q-switch lasers regarding pigment removal so um, as you all know um, with aging there comes a lot of really lazy melanocytes and we are going to develop also because of um, extrinsic factors um, a lot of pigments so uh, for almost 90 um, of all the caucasian skin types we develop um, solar lentigos and this means that millions of people are affected of that um, also in asia so we have uh, in germany france and the us millions of people who are looking for uh, laser pigment removal So now it comes to our to our topic of the day. So we have our Q switch technology, and uh, we are able to concentrate the energy into you know very short pulses in nanosecond range. And um, as you might know, we are also able to basically uh, work on pigment with um, millisecond technology. But this um, does not need the, the same amount of energy and the peak power. And um, as you know, we are um, in um, um, yes uh, um, comparison between um, uh, thermal mode and uh, photoacoustic mode. So um, of course, when we use nanosecond technology, we are really close to um, a photoacoustic effect and um, this is going to have a lot of features during the treatment and afterwards for the patient so here we have uh, the comparison about um, long pulse and q switch as you see the different pulse length uh, the power spot sizes and the density of power so i was talking about optipulse technology and uh, with Optical technology, we have the possibility to evenly distribute the plumes that we select um, across um, two different parts of pulses. So we have, in fact, two pulses with a delay time in between. And this is a big advantage also for um, the Asian skin type. So we have, in fact, a reduction in laser purpura after the treatment. Uh, we have a reduction of erythema in the skin. So this is, of course, a great patient comfort. And we have a low risk of PIH. And as you might know, um, when we talk about tattoo removal and pigment removal, PIH is one of the side effects that we have to uh, to handle so this is going to be our photothermal mode and it's kind of a free running mode for um, our wavelengths of 1064 and the ruby wavelength so um, this is also a very useful application to 
heat, as it says, a photothermal uh, mode, when we want to heat a certain kind of target structure. So, for example, when we do skin rejuvenation and we have acne scars, when we have rosacea, um, the intima of the vessel, or when we want to you put a, a pit into uh, structures like the nail when we have onychomycosis or nail fungus, um, their uh, photothermal mode is very useful. And um, we have the possibility to also uh, do a combination together with a fractional treatment. So um, what you can do with other laser technologies, you are able to do this as well with Nanostar because of the features of fractional hand pieces. So um, really important in this point is you see this, you have a long single pulse and we are able to um, have the pulses with a NDF of uh, 300 microseconds and uh, we have an imitation of two milliseconds with the really wavelength. So what makes um, Nanostar special as well is our OptiBeam technology. And OptiBeam in fact means um, that the um, generated uh, beam is more perfect and you can avoid hotspots, um, ensuring that um, you have a perfect treatment. So whenever you see a um, Q-switch laser, a lot of them have these round spots and when you're doing a treatment there is the possibility that you overlap you always in fact overlap and some of them are also proceeding in like olympic rings so you have at least um 10 to 20 percent of overlapping and uh, we know when you have uh, a square theme it's much easier to proceed and to um ensure a really good treatment without overlapping, without hotspots, and um, you don't miss any um, any part of, uh, of, the, of the tattoo. You can work more precise, and um, also you are faster, because you don't really need to think about, oh, I, I don't like to overlap, and I need to ensure a good treatment, so you, you just do it. You have 20% uh, percent of shorter treatment time. Um, compared to around traditional So this is how it looks like. You can see um, the comparison between um, a round spot laser and um, the optimated beam. And you can see here the other feature of Nanostar, what we call mixed technology. So uh, mixed technology, and this is very important, Nanostar comes in different varieties, so different options of, uh, of the uh, device. So with Nanostar C mixed technology, we have the possibility to, uh, to uh, process a mixed technology. And um, this is, um, like some of you know, from um, other laser hair removals, but especially for pigmented lesions into two. So we are able to deliver the energy uh, from different sources. So we can use uh, Ruby and NDX, for example, and we can uh, deliver at the same time or with a small delay the energy. So this is one of uh, the examples for Ruby in combination with 1064 NDX. So um, as you know, from an absorption level and uh, from, the, from the target level, you have uh, different advantages in each wavelength. So when we talk about pigment treatment, the um, 1064 of course has um, absorption in melanin and uh, it has a higher depth of penetration, but it's also um, absorbing in oxyhemoglobin and the beaten water. So when we, call, uh, when we talk about melasma, then uh, we are very 
effective and trials have shown that when we use the low depth of penetration and the high absorption of melanin, because as you know, 1064 has a very, very low uh, peak at uh, melanin. And when we combine the features of a higher depth of penetration with a 1064 and a better absorption of melanin with a 694, then uh, we are really, really effective in treating melasma. So for this, um, the Nanostar C, um, it's uh, called Nanostar Combo Mix Technology, is very, very good for this uh, special kind of treatment. And it delivers a high efficiency and uh, also a safety for the patient. We have another option. So when we talk about mixed technology with um, 694 and uh, doubled NDX or 532, then uh, we also can perfectly treat pigment. And um, we can see uh, 532 um, or KTP wavelength, um, they are really good in absorbing uh, melanin. And um, we have uh, at 694 a uh, wavelength that is also strongly absorbed by melanin and just a little bit uh, with uh, oxyhemoglobin. So when we use a mixed technology with the sequential emission of 694 and 532, um, then we are double targeting melanin absorption. And uh, we also can have a reduction on the risk of PIH, thereby uh, by maximum, uh, maximizing the efficiency and safety for, for the treatment for the patient. So these are our new hand pieces. Um, the spaces um, are completely sterilizable, so you can um, disinfect or sterilize uh, the two spaces. This is perfect for, for the practice. So um, we have a click lock closure, there's a magnet, and um, this is really easy to handle for everyone. And we have an automatic uh, detection. So whenever you change the hand pieces, like different spot sizes, the system will know which, which uh, spot size is detected and will um, automatically change it in the system and on a display. These are the different hand pieces. And uh, what I found really good about these uh, new hand pieces, that it's easy to remind which kind of spot do I have uh, related to a different spot size. So when I think about the smallest spot size, size then uh, it's a purple one, it goes on with three by three, it's red, then four by four yellow and five by five green. So it's really easy to adapt. We have the two fractional hand pieces here. These are um, one, the, the one, first one is uh, the, um, the hand pieces of eight millimeters. So this is uh, the deep fractional and the high coverage. So we have the high coverage on, on the right with nine millimeter diameter, it's gray. And uh, we have the DF, it's black. So we use a micro lens area in fact for that. And uh, so we ensure that we have a really homogeneous spot and um, this is not uh, dependent on um, a loss of fluence. So we have now with a DF, it's a deep fractional, and we can do a skin rejuvenation and a scar treatment at the same time. So it's perfect, it goes deeper as it says, it's deep fractional. And then we have the high coverage. And um, this is really perfect for really um, a lighter, but uh, a more efficient um, treatment of skin aging in combination with pigmentation. And also, what is a great addition with the fractional hand pieces is that you can perfectly combine it with a tattoo removal. So, um, when imagine when you have 
um, for example, an amateur uh, tattoo that is uh, very, you know, uh, deep and dense, and you might have uh, some scar tissue underneath, like fibrotic scar tissue. You can do a fractional um, fractional treatment in combination with the tattoo treatment to get rid of the fibrotic scar tissue and to reach um, another levels of um, of the skin. So this is the technical data for the fractional hair pieces. We have um, the eight millimeters on the left, nine millimeters on the right. And you can see um, we also are able to do um, a combination uh, treatment of wavelength with different uh, spot sizes and fractional hair pieces. This is what I was uh, referring to um, at the beginning. We have three different modes of nanostar. We have the classic nanostar R, that is the ruby wavelength. We have Y, this is uh, ruby, and, and this is 1064, uh, and um, we have uh, 532. And then we have the combo that includes everything all of the three wavelengths and um, with also the mixed technology. So mixed technology is also is only possible with the combo mode. This is what you are going to see later, the state of the art design. <laughs> so you will see that live. We have a really nice user interface. Um, and I'd like to say that um, I know a lot of uh, lasers in the market, basically everyone, um, every every laser, and this is really um, really easy to adapt. So uh, we have um, the um, user interface that you are used to uh, from um, our devices. Really easy to handle with um, um, really intuitive uh, user guidance. And uh, we have this step-by-step -step selection screen that you're used to. So this is really easy to adapt. And this is uh, the main screen, the laser screen uh, on the left. Um, and the, at the end of, of, of the site and the settings. And you have a lot of uh, possibilities to change uh, things. Also the aiming beam. Um, identity of the screen or um, you can mute the sounds as possible and uh, you can change um, the fluence, the spot size um, and you can see a counter if um, in your practice you're charging by counts. You can also counter and you can um, return uh, and um, and save um, the count zero with that. And you can see um, we have the different sources available. The source is there. Uh, case we are choosing the uh, support key switch and uh, this is locked in. So I think we were talking about selective absorption before and um, this is a short overview again um, about how we um, can be very effective and successful with this three wavelength in um, absorption and penetration depth. These are the different um, penetration levels with the selective absorption. So we have uh, once uh, a switch or ruby with a low absorption, then in water, then in Zoom với vì sao nó chậm hơn hơn bài giảng thực tế rồi kìa.
giao ở trong Of course, you said I'm really boring. Uh, most of uh, the patients, um, they suffer of scarring. So um, the patient doesn't want to have a time off. Um, we don't really need anesthesia. So whenever we work, uh, we work with, um, with lasers. I recommend to use a simmer system, so a cryo cooling system. And this is some kind of pain relief as well. So this has an anesthesia effect on um, on the skin by um, by um, having an effect of the vascular component. So this has a vasoconstriction effect, and this is of course reducing the pain level for the patient. But uh, of course, as you all know. We are more enthusiastic when we get a tattoo. I don't have a tattoo, but I heard it of a lot of people that they are full of enthusiasm and they really want to have this tattoo. Maybe they are in love, and uh, afterwards they they split, and um, you know the partnership um, is over, and um, they suffering. And of course, this is um, caused by really, really more. Uh, negative uh, influences and so um, the removal of tattoo itself isn't that painful it isn't more painful than um, the, the inking itself but um, there are not that much endorphins that you have by inking um, first so whenever you see a doctor it is um, combined with a lot of cost and with pain, so your endorphins are going very, very low, and this is causing uh, this negative effect as well. So, whatever um, the um, operator is going to offer you um, um, uh, an aesthetic, um, then um, you can choose between either um, a cryo system, so a simmer system, or a topical anesthetics. So these are the different types of pigment, uh, of pigment typology. Um, so we have um, different types of tattoos. Of course, um, the most common one is the professional one. We have the amateur, the cosmetic. So as we, as we all know, this is um, like micro, um, what is it called? Micro blading microblading or permanent makeup. Um, we have the traumatic ones uh, that are caused by accidents and we have the medical tattoos. And um, as you know, the medical tattoos are not that common anymore because in radiotherapy, especially in breast cancer, they don't use this uh, kind of uh, marking anymore. Um, so, um, you see the different pigmentation depths here. You can see um, the concentration of pigments and the different pigment types. So um, you have in, a, a, in a organic metallic dyes, you can have organometallic dyes, uh, different kind of inks with different um, with different denses, um, or classic uh, iron or titanium oxide. You can have carbon metals, and of course, a lot of um, the traumatics, um, the two types are caused by dirt. And all of these uh, effects, all of these factors are having an um, influence on um, 
how you're going to be successful with the tattoo. It's not only, you know, uh, the technology that stands behind the tattoo removal. It's also really um, focusing on how the tattoo removal has been done, how professional it, it, it has been done. And of course, um, other factors like wound healing um, and um, yeah, intrinsic and extrinsic factors. So this is a really nice picture of uh, a pigment under um, microscopy. It's a microscopy um, imaging. And you can see um, two different arms with a uh, tattoo. And you can see um, it might, might uh, look equal, you know, but it looks really similar. So the left and the right tattoo and um, the kinds of colors they use. But under the microscope, you can see really differences. So um, you can see um, the first picture that the pigment is very um, dense, and the other picture is has a really low density um, of color. So this is one of uh, the examples that um, organic and unorganic um, the two ink can cause. Um, other densities of the pigment in the skin. So this is uh, what we're going to do um, when we decide to have a tattoo. So a lot of people, they are worried about having a tattoo removal because they don't know how is the body going to handle it or how are the lymphocytes and the metabolic system, you know, the liver is going to absorb it via the phagocytosis. Um, so they are worried about the tattoo removal, but they should be worried about um, the, the pigmenting and um, and the inking at first. So this is uh, about one micron where the tattoo ink is in a professional way placed. So when you go to a professional tattoo artist, and you can see we have uh, the macrophages, the fibroblasts, and the little veins um, uh, right underneath. So it's really easy for um, the body to, uh, for the ink to to get everywhere uh, it wants. So uh, of course there is a lot of absorption by um, by the system first when you get uh, your tattoo at first. So this is also the reason why professional tattoos are inked a lot of times. So. It's not just one treatment when you want to have a perfect uh, tattoo. So sometimes um, the customer is going to see uh, his or her tattoo artist um, a few times until it's uh, perfectly fine. So how many questions do we have now? Okay, perfect. So this is um, a really nice picture about the biological effect of a tattoo removal. So what um, is in fact happening into the skin is really, really interesting. You have, um, when you do a tattoo removal, you can see the frosting effect. And what is it causing? So you have a uh, fading uh, and a transdermal migration to the epidermis. And this is a dermal epidermal wound channels that we are creating. And then a phagocytosis by the macrophages are going to happen uh, in combination and with the help of keratinocytes and um, the um, the most of the tattoo pigment um, is going to agglomerate in little clumps and uh, you know this is um, the clumps that the macrophages are attacking and um, then the fibroblasts are coming and uh, some kind of inflammation process is going on to make the body be able to rapidly um, cleanse the body out of the tattoo pigment. So um, we have then this lymphatic migration into the lymph nodes and also to the liver and uh, absorbing the pigment. This is going to happen during um, the inking and during the tattoo removal. So the process inside the body is the same. And um, you can see here, as we, as I said, that you are going to um, agglomerate these little clumps of, uh, of pigment. Of course, 
um, we have um, a shattering of the pigment into smaller pieces. So of course, smaller pieces are much easier to uh, to are going to be removed by the lymphatic system and to having a quite a phagocytosis. So when we have this uh, biological effect of, um, of the photo disruption during the tissue removal, you can see we have this crossing effect. This is some kind of clinical endpoint for us. So whenever we do um, test spots for for uh, tattoo removal, we have to ensure that we have the perfect um, fluence and the perfect spot size uh, for different kinds of tattoos. So we have, of course, also uh, a thermal effect and um, a thermal effect on um, the ink particles, and um, we are going to um, to um, produce little channels so that it's basically like popcorn. The pigment is popping out of the skin, and uh, it's going to have a transdermal uh, release. So this is what you see. Um, was what the dermis is going to form, these little vacuoles, and this is the whitening of the skin, or as we call it, frosting. So um, this is a transdermal migration, the frosting, and it's causing an, um, an effect, an injury on the basal membrane of the skin. So uh, we have first the transdermal pigment that comes out of the skin, and the rest is going to um, form inside the body and is going to um, mobilize and to be removed by the lymphatic system. This is how it's going to look like inside a macrophage. So basically, phagocytosis is um, an explanation for the macrophage to eat any kind of enemy. So of course, in this case, um, the pigment is an enemy too. So what um, is going to happen afterwards as well, because inflammation is a process that can last uh, for um, a couple of days, also a couple of weeks. So you can see this uh, inflammatory process. So you can see an erythema and edema, of course. And inside your body, there's a lot going on. So the macrophages and the leukocytes are reacting to the ink pigment, so that's the enemy in fact. And um, you uh, have, um, uh, yeah, the body is going to get rid of the pigment through this um, process. So when we um, look um, a few weeks later, um, when we have a look a few weeks later on the, on the tattoo, so you have, uh, sometimes it looks like you have uh, this fading of the tattoo. And this is, in fact, um, a reactive hyperplasia uh, of uh, end with uh, intracellular pigment. And that uh, is um, the reaction that you have of the body getting rid of the pigment. So this is an extension. So again, this is the fade out effect I was talking to by injury of the basal membrane. And um, it also depends on different kinds of, of the two um, ink. So whenever you have very dense and um, anorganic um, ink, of course, you have to do more of this treatment and a longer rest or um, waiting time in between. This is a typical clinical endpoint you can see here. Um, this is done by, I think it's done by a Ruby from uh, one of our uh, doctors in Germany. And uh, you can see right after um, the treatment, um, you can see the, the frosting. And um, this is of course caused by extremely rapid heating and a photoacoustic effect on the pigment and um, these uh, really you know, small vacuous uh, evaporation in, in water and the little small vacuous and ch uh, channels that are producing pigment transdermally. We have a few uh, examples for tattoo removal ongoing. So um, you can see uh, uh, tattoo removal with uh, 1064 
Unfortunately, I cannot tell you how many treatments have been done. Maybe Francesca knows. No, she doesn't know. <laughs> and um, this is also a DNA of uh, an exotome. And you can see um, there was a reaction before and also afterwards you can see some kind of scarring and that um, I don't know what caused the scarring. Maybe it's, uh, it has been caused by the, um, by the treatment or by the inking. This is also a really good example for um, scarring after tattoo. So you can see uh, parts of PIH, you can see parts of hyperpigmentation and of, uh, of um, very superficial scarring. And you can see on the left when um, we have the before uh, picture that the scarring was also visible at first. So in this case, um, the um, laser was not um, the major point of creating um, um, side effects. We have a tattoo removal result here again, done with uh, 1064 on the back. The most common Asian tattoos. I think some of the people, they don't really know what it means. So it could be everything. This is also really good. Um, I will skip back. This is also a very good result. Um, of course, you can see a lot of, um, of residual uh, pigment. Um, but um, you know, when you work with 1064, sometimes um, I would always recommend to do a 1064 first and then maybe switch to another wavelength to get rid of this really recalcitrant. Um, yeah. Um, pigment that is left. So in this case, it's uh, a brownish um, color. We have uh, tattoo removal on the arm. And uh, for indications of pigment, this is it from tattoo removal side. We're going to switch to indications of pigment. And we can see um, all of the advantages of pigment removal with the laser. So we are really um, gentle. We, um, when we um, compare this to um, uh, curettage, so that means um, a shaving of the pigment or removing of the pigment, the laser is very gentle. We are fast, we are virtually painless. We do not expect any scarring and it usually takes um, one to, uh, to two sessions. Uh, and this is depending on um, the pigment itself, so how dark is the pigment and um, how effective is the um, use technology for the, the special pigment. So when we use um, this um, laser for pigments and um, there will be a few customers that are not interested in tattoo removal, but they want to have a few switch laser just for the indication of pigments. So uh, when we do um, a preparation for that, we of course have to clean the treatment area, remove any hair cosmetics or deodorant, and then um, we see another um, clinical endpoint. So we don't have this frosting, but we can see uh, a change of the lesion. So it's going to be a whitish gray skin change, a, a slight whitening, and this depends on how um, dark the pigment is. So the darker the pigment, um, the stronger the reaction. And this, of course, is done by photothermal effect. So it selective photothermalizes of the pigment and a bit of evaporation. And you can see also just a few, uh, a few vacuoles that are causing also this um, effect. And um, you have an exfoliation after a few days to weeks. And you are shattering, you know, um, the the pigment, and it um, it appears more light um, when uh, you have your first um, your first pigment removal. So there are two different types of techniques for that. We can have really small areas uh, with a point by point coverage, and we have, you know, some kind of polka dot um, 
technique that is really suitable for larger areas like the street. And of course, um, the laser is not doing any, um, I miss the words, um, sheet. Oh yes, it's different. It's just a normal word. <laughs> it doesn't make any difference between um, the uh, and you know an an ink and pigment that is um, that is um, brought to to the skin um, with uh, with a tattoo artist or that is natural in your skin. What it makes, what it does at the end is uh, to also split it into smaller uh, fragments so that the body is. Um, able to get rid of it more easy. So we have a few um, examples for pigment removal. You can see um, this is also really nice. Uh, immediately after the treatment, um, the clinical endpoint. So this typical grayish white um, effect that we have, and this is also the side uh, an endpoint. So we are really uh, looking for that actively. And after the treatment session, so a few weeks later, this is an old picture. I have to say that it's an old picture, but it's the same technology but for pigment removal. So we can see pigment removal with uh, 532 and a bit of rejuvenation as well. Another Example, and you can see here um, the um, different pigmented areas are marked, and you can see relief on the right. So I have to drink a bit of water. Just give me a second. So this is a um, really nice example for a ruby treatment. Um, it can, might be um, a chlorosma or melasma, but um, it looks more like um, like a cafeole or like um, um, you know like a, another kind of dispigmentation. So um, in fact, if it's a melasma and you can only see that with a special lamp, um, there's no kind of vascularization under it. And uh, the opposite is this lady, and she as you might see, has also um, a lot of, of pigment and maybe with uh, a co um, component of a vascular. So um, this is a mixture. And um, as you know, Asian skin types, they um, are really into, yes, um, developing a PIH. So you have to be um, very, very um, gentle during the treatment are not causing any kind of uh, inflammation that can um, cause a rebound. These are very good um, examples for ruby laser treatment as well. So again, on a darker skin type, and of course, when we talk about a darker skin type, we have to make sure that we don't create a hyperpigmentation. So you can see here a very slight hyperpigmentation um, in um, comparison to the rest of, of the face. And uh, often it's going to fade after an amount to up to six uh, months. Again, pigment removal. I have a lot, a lot of uh, pictures for pigment removal. So this again, um, you can see uh, we have a bit of inflammation afterwards. It's um, one month after the first treatment, but with a very good result. And of course, um, as um, it's normal practice, you can combine uh, the laser treatment with uh, topical um, ingredients like uh, topical steroids, isotretinoin, uh, and um, retin-A, uh, yeah, same, you can combine this. Or acylenic acid, um, this is possible as well. But you should always be sure that you don't have any 
um, you know, ingredients used to your skin that are causing a total sensibility of your skin. So that has to be um, avoided, of course. So we can see pigment removal with freckles on the arm. And of course, we have to ensure that um, we only treat benign pigment. So this has to be under supervision of a doctor. Again, the face with a slight rejuvenation effect as well. And this is a very, you know, recalcitrant um, um, and very severe um, case of pigmentation. So she will have a lot of, of treatments and also in the last month, you know, the patients, um, they're going to be your best buddies forever when your doctor working your practice on the last patients because um, there are so many uh, factors that can uh, cause a rebound of the melasma so that you have to ensure maintenance um, basically basically um, um, all of your life you assume, for, for the rest of your life. So we come to the point of skin rejuvenation. That's also a really um, interesting part of the nanosterm. Uh, at first, I said, okay, we will do a short introduction to Nanostar. I completely lied about that because we have so much to show you that um, it's going to extend a bit. But as you can see, we um, have only eight uh, pages left, so we cried at the end. And uh, I'm looking forward to your questions. How many questions do we have now? Yay! So they're increasing. I'm looking forward to that. So, um, when we talk about skin rejuvenation, then um, and this is what you know a lot of, uh, especially young women, are going to um, avoid by using. Uh, filters, <laughs> that's um, the most common thing, to use a filter, um, and uh, of course to use uh, topicals to um, basically um, fill the pores, so they fill the pores and then they, they use makeup over it to, um, to really decrease um, the pore size. And what we do with the laser is uh, we are creating a little explosion. Um, because this is going to happen uh, in the interaction with the laser beam. And uh, this can cause by many, many factors. So we can use it, we can cause it by a thermal um, effect. So um, a photothermolysis, by selective photothermolysis, by mechanical damage. Um, and this is also very useful when you have a chromophore like water. So um, what we want to achieve is reduction of the pore size. So uh, whenever you uh, talk about skin rejuvenation, of course you're talking about pore size and wrinkles. This is a really good um, example for, um, for um, a pore reduction. So uh, it looks like she has some comedones um, on the nose, but in fact that these are um, hair filaments. So it's hair follicles, hair filaments, and this is very visible um, in fair skin types. So what we are doing is to um, basically remove these uh, filaments and to um, have a better clearance in this part that uh, makes it um, very, um, very attractive, you know. This is a pore reduction uh, with a few switch laser as well. This is um, done by, by Tattoo Star. We have skin rejuvenation on the forehead. Yeah, done by a Ruby. So, in fact, we are at the end of um, the presentation. There's only a bit of bibliography going on, so you can see we have now, because of the long tradition of uh, 
use which raises a lot of clinical evidence. So this is very good for you and for your customers as well. This is going to support you in your selling process. And um, yes, we are at the end of the presentation. I'd like to um, apologize for the interruption. So um, are you going to see me now? Yeah, say hello again. So I'm ready for uh, the question and answers part. So I'm looking forward to that. And Francesca will, will uh, tell me what you're going to ask. And I'm hopefully can answer to that. Yes, we have some questions. Yes. So I think everyone can do it. So the first one is, can you explain why you would use the movie combined with the NDR testing before for the treatment of melasma? Yes. And then the question says, I do not understand well why you would use safe melasma. Is it there too much thermal effect? Okay. So I will come back to the slide because I think um, this is much more easy for you. Can you still see the slides? Okay, it's perfect. So um, I have to skip a bit of my screen so that we can fully see that. Can you see that now? Oh no, it starts from the beginning. <laughs> Yeah, you think I'm going to support that with the slide because then it's easier for you to see that. And the slide, we'll start from the beginning. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. So, um, I don't know if you're going to see me then. So, um, when we have um, the Ruby and the NDX, we used um, the power um, of the Ruby and, and pigment. Together with the um, with the penetration depth of the 1064, so that makes sense when uh, we talk about a different kind of melasma. As you know, we, there are different varieties of melasma, and of course, this is not perfect for every kind of melasma. But when you have really, you know, severe um, melasma, and you you need to have uh, a penetration depth, and, and when you have a epidermal and dermal part of melasma. So then it's very useful to um, to use the synergy of a penetration there in combination with a good absorption. And also when you use two wavelengths, you have uh, a lot more of, um, you know, you, you're um, decreasing the factor of side effects. So um, in this case, um, we use a higher absorption again of uh, 694 together with a penetration depth of 1065. So um, a lot of studies uh, that have been done inside um, uh, LN and the family has shown that um, this is really reducing any side effects. So uh, at first it doesn't make sense. I really agree to that, but um, the result and the outcome is outstanding. Okay. Second question. Is it possible to connect the multi fractional handling to the Nanostar R, or is the fractional only compatible with the Nanostar CM? So, um, this is a question, and I'm, uh, I, I need to ensure that um, that has to be um, skipped to our product management, but I think um, it's only possible with the uh, with the uh, combo and mixed technology. Okay, yeah, we will clarify that. Uh, we'll come back to you later then. Third question: uh, Are there variants of the Namstar available yet? So. Um, this is a really nice question. I like that because I'm really into clinical evidence, as you might know. And um, we have um, a really new a member of our product family at the moment. So, um, you know, the Nanostar um, has been developed inside the family. 
so yes, uh, we have clinical evidence to the technology, um, to the different parts, to the mixed technology, optical parts, all the stuff, photothermal, yes, we do have that, uh, but we need to create it especially for the nanoscale at the moment. And you know, um, uh, the whole current situation is a factor that is not going to, um, you know, um, to, to give us more time to do that. So, um, in fact, we think that we are going to achieve um, results at the end of the year. And um, we will uh, forward uh, them to you as soon as they are available. Mm -hmm. uh, is the NASA using carbon lotion? But it's a very common procedure here in Saudi Arabia. Yeah, I know that. I know that. That's really a trendy um, procedure. Um, well, I am in aesthetic medicine in the aesthetic market for many years, and I'm not a great fan of carbon peeling. I think it's a mess. Whenever you use this lotion, um, you know, you have to have a special optic for that, and um, you have uh, a consumable, the lotion is a consumable, the treatment is very dirty, it's very loud because, you know, it's like popping, these popping sounds all the time. I think um, you can do a good fractional treatment, or um, you can do um, uh, with the fractional hand pieces a uh, really good treatment with quite the same results as we would have it with a carbon peeling. And I know um, the carbon peeling is very, or the Hollywood peel, I start with, um, with uh, you know, um, a market, a market introduction with uh, the name Hollywood peel. And um, yes, I know it's safe for a lot of skin types, but you have a lot of, um, of targets for the laser as well. Remember when you when you work with 1064 carbon peel on, on the carbon dose, you have a lot of targets for the laser and all of these little um, uh, parts of the carbon uh, lotion are going to spread everywhere. So there's a lot of also vaporization and this is causing, in my opinion, also damage on the optics and um, then you, the doctor will have a um, consumable again so he has to change uh, the optic more often than it would be um, when he's going to use um, the laser in a normal way. So there are special lasers for carbon peel. I think yes, carbon peel is good when you want to, um, when you have a really you know, low budget nanosecond laser and you want to achieve better results and you want to show but um, in fact, here we have a uh, really good um, solid uh, nanosecond laser with fractional half pieces. So um, just, you know, have the doctors, we don't, you don't need the carbon peel anymore. You don't need the carbon treatment anymore because now you're able to do fractional um, really good results with no, or originally no downtime with a uh, nanosecond device as well. So this makes a big difference for me. So yes, um, that's a good question as well. Um, we have the opportunity to do, um, I don't know if you're going to see that with um, the uh, millisecond um, opportunity of the Ruby. You are basically able to do a reduction, not a removal, a reduction um, and the widening um, of the hair that is possible, yes. Can we combine NPR and UV laser at the same time for pigmented? Yes, it's possible as well. Anh có thể kéo to là cái phần đấy lên đấy, cái phần giảng viên lên xong đấy kéo nhỏ cái phần đấy xuống, cái phần bài giảng xuống được mà. Để chỗ ở giữa ấy, anh kéo cái xuống to cái phần giảng viên lên, không phải? Thế để chỗ ở giữa, chỗ cái dưới đây luôn rồi đấy. Yes, uh, 
So there are different yeah, kinds of treatment for vascular yeah, lesions. Um, you might know this from PDLs, from pulse dilators. You can have uh, two uh, possibilities. You can uh, either um, have a coagulation effect or a disruption or rupture of the vessel. So whenever you have a rupture, there's going, it's going to end with a corpora. And of course, we want to avoid that. So this is also, um, I to look for the for the slide to show you that. And that's um, by the way a typical German noise is in when we're going to look for something. Yeah. So I think it's often it's. Um, it's easier to show it to you, to you visually and then to you, um, so no. I don't know where I have it, but I, I have recently show, shown it to you. Yes, um, and, and this is also, this depends on the different wavelengths that are using when you are treating um, different kind of patients. So, in case we are treating acne scars, we use 1064. And of course, 1064 has an absorption of the hemoglobin. And um, yes, it's working for that because um, we are working uh, with, um, as I said, with nanosecond technology um, in between um, a photothermal effect and a photoacoustic effect. So, yeah, um, there are two components that are going to have an effect. On, on the target tissue or the target itself. And in case of vascularization, it's treating the vascular component and uh, the pigmented component at the same time with a different penetration depth and um, absorptions. So it's possible. Of course, it can, uh, you can have a small side effect by corpora, but it depends also on the fluence and um, yeah, basically then on the fluence that you're going to use. And of course, the spot size. The spot size has an effect on it as well. I'm sorry for that. I wanted to show you the slide, but I cannot find it anymore um, for, for the uh, acne scars. But if you uh, provide your um, your data to us, um, I can I can send you um, this uh, this slide afterwards or an explanation. Yeah. Okay, do we have another one? So that's it for now. Um, we will skip to um, the, the part where we are going to treat uh, actively, we're going to treat the tattoo. And I'd like to prepare my program first. So my guinea pig is going to wait me uh, in the clinical room and she has a bit of numbing cream a bit of numbing ointment because um, she is a very sensible person and that's totally fine and we will support also with the cryo system so i will have a microphone and my colleagues are going to assist me thanks for that and uh, we will see each other uh, in a few minutes by going I think it's going to be a five to ten minutes. So, see you later.
there to win this year a less strong win. And this is uh, going to have an influence on your um, shoes of um, laser fluids. Popping noise. Do you see that? So at the end of the treatment, I'm always checking if I have missed something. So I have a small part here that I missed. So we have nearly two points. So in fact, that's it. And um, what is really uh, important as well is um, when we stop here, that she has, uh, of course, the seven treatment, but she has uh, also um, a lot of um, hydronic tissue. So um, I will leave a long duration between treatments. So up to six to eight weeks for her in her case. And um, uh, you can see. Um, maybe um, she will uh, have small blisters afterwards. It's really, really uh, necessary to know that you don't have to um, to take the blisters. So they are just you know um, uh, protecting a surface from your own body. So uh, in case it's a bad big blister, of course you should do um, a professional opening of the blister by a doctor. And in any other case, it's really, really highly recommend that you use a bazinga afterwards to pre to to uh, you know, pre cool or uh, cool afterwards. So uh, in this uh, case, you um, do an after cooling, or you can use cold pack. So what I use afterwards uh, is some kind of uh, healing ointment. You can use. Um, I will show you the camera. You can use uh, a super plus ointment. This is really nice because uh, it's not exclusive and it has a really a uh, nice healing component, really nice healing uh, ingredient. So um, I'm not into uh, things uh, ointments, and um, I think uh, you should not use something that is too uh, occlusive because the um, the skin needs to breathe, and um, you also protect the skin from um, this treatment. You can also use a, a aquaphor, that's also really nice. Uh, maybe um, recommended for direct afterwards, use more the aquaphor, but it's more protective. Um, and then um, you can uh, recommend to, uh, to the patient to buy a uh, super plus and to use it whenever, you know, in terms of inflammation, the uh, skin is going to, uh, to tingle or uh, to itch. So, of course, you should not scratch um, whenever it's going to, to itch, just apply uh, a bit of, of ointment, so it will fade away. And you can see here, we don't have that much of erythema and eczema because of the cooling. And I'm not a, a big fan of foils. So whenever you do the wrapping or foil, um, there will be some, uh, you know, wound um, uh, water coming out, like um, wound extract. And, um, you know, it's really, um, really, really important that the area is complete. So whenever you're going to protect the area, then um, it should be just for a few hours afterwards 
it should be a free thing to be able to do. So, good day, Melina. Thanks very much for your support. And that, um, you know, our practical part ends here. And I'm open for questions again. Yes, fair enough. There is one question. Can yes. you hear me? I can hear you. So the question is, would you prefer to use a longer interval than six to eight weeks due to the location of the tattoo? I always advise, said um, our guest, between eight to 10 or even 12 weeks because of the limited presence of the impacted vessels. Yeah. yeah, that's a really good point. So whenever you uh, go to the lower extremity, um, and if we also um, talked about the fact that she was a previous smoker, so she has, of course, um, she's struggling with the fact of blood circulation. And what um, she used to this kind of treatment, so I have to point that out. And uh, what I always uh, tell her is to um, to lay um, her, her leg after the treatment, uh, you know, to uh, position it. Um, you know, on, on, on another um, table, on the table, or on another uh, chair, and um, to uh, you know prevent this area from um, a swelling. And um, yes, because of the bad lymphatic um, drainage, and that is a really good point. Uh, sometimes it takes longer than that, so um, it can be possible and. We meet each other every week, so I have a really good, um, um, you know, um, uh, view of the situation, and I can say, okay, I think um, there's not not that much going on anymore, and we can proceed with my treatment. But in fact, yes, sometimes even after eight weeks, eight to twelve weeks, a change is visible. So yeah, uh, in these kind of areas. Um, on the angle, um, it's possible that it's going to take much longer than that. Yeah, I, I completely agree. Do we have another question? Um, Verena, there is one question. Uh, it's more related to the user interface. Yes. Uh, so if we can, uh, if you want to go, go for it. Yeah. So I will go to the user interface. Yeah. So everyone says bye to Lena, even if she's not able to hear you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, I'm ready, Francesca. Yes, just if we if we can have a look at the user interface, yes. the settings, and how how to how to. I, I think it's, it's better to uh, to be here. You can still see me, yes. and you can see the user interface. So we can zoom in. I love technology. So okay, you can see that. So I'm you now. Don't do anything out of period. <laughs> no. No. Okay, I'm ready for the question. So the question was a general one, just to, to go through the settings and the different options of the device. Okay, so we um, have really, as you can see, it's a really um, um, nice and easy to use this interface. So um, we have, of course, the home button and the start button options. Uh, this is a service button that's uh, uh, for the for the food service engineer. Uh, with options, you have um, the possibility to choose between uh, different uh, languages. So uh, in this case, we uh, provide Italian, uh, Spanish, um, German, French, and English. Um, we can have a diagnostic uh, level, a water level. We have a burst mode, and I, I think I'm going. We come to that when we have another session. So um, that's more detail. Um, I will go to this. Um, I think we will plan another session when we have a question and piece 
it's also available. That makes sense. So um, we start, of course, uh, with the start button. That basically um, the screen you're going to work with. So you can choose between uh, the view switch and the total travel mode. Here you can see um, the delay between pulses when you uh, choose the mix technology, either uh, with um, without NDX um, Ruby or with NDX and Ruby. So you have a, you can have a delay, and we were talking about um, a delay when in terms uh, maybe for um, for presentation. Uh, so in terms of tutorial removal, I can show you that. Um, so in terms of tutorial removal, with um, the few switch, um, we have the half delay completely off because it's not necessary there. So um, then you have the different fluences. So we have the Ruby and the NDX, and you can um, do um, settings individually. So not depending um, on each other. So um, you can have uh, a delay time here. You can set a delay time. You can set the appearances uh, um, to close per centimeter for the Ruby and the NDX. And here you can change the repetition rate. The spot size will be detected automatically when I change the, uh, the uh, hand piece. And um, here I was talking, um, some of you might remember that, I was talking about the counter. And uh, the counter is uh, necessary in terms uh, of uh, paying for parts, you know, when I tell the uh, patient, okay, I'm not going, to, it's not going to pay me by area, but I'm going to treat in terms of to removal, I'm going to pay for parts. But uh, this is something that you have to decide. Um, here you have the different nodes that you can choose. So also uh, for this one here, I want to change. It always wants you to ensure that you are okay with the changes. So yes, I want to change the source. And now I'm in the uh, Ruby and uh, 532 mode. I can switch to the full Ruby mode. And here I have um, just the Ruby in Q switch and in total thermal. And you can hear the speed sound. This, this is, you know, the system telling me that he is um, he's ready to work um, in this um, setting. Here we have um, the yet mode. We have the um, the proper thermal, the optical, and um, we have the uh, physics mode. And just the normal um, NDX modes and uh, the yes, the five thirty physics mode. So this is mainly everything. So I think we can go back to Remember, I was working with uh, the mix technology with 694 and 1064, and uh, we can reset the counter here. So when I on the counter, yes, I want to reset the counter. I can do that and go on to another area, um, and um, I can, you know, um, know what kind of, or how many pulses I need for for a special area. Here, yeah, there's also the possibility to uh, set um, laser programs. So, whenever you have a preferred parameter, you can set it to your table to be saved the parameters. So, this is really a nice. You have a lot of free slots here, and uh, you can select programs from your own database. So, um, to be um, very um, Precise here, you don't have pre settings because it doesn't make any sense to have pre settings in the two, two removal station. So, um, as you might know, and we were talking about that, 
we are going to have a, a, a good political end time. Uh, and this is um, the point where I decide whether I increase or decrease skill. So it's my political end point that makes a uh, difference here. Yeah? So um, most of the time um, I'm choosing um, the parameters of because of my experience and not uh, because of the database. Serena, yeah. there is one more question. Yes. If we can show, please, also how to change the hand pieces. Yes, I can show that as well. I don't need my glasses anymore. And um, I'd like to um, come back to why I'm not wearing the mask during the treatment with the patient. So I'm fully vaccinated. I, have already, I already have my two vaccinations and that's the reason why I was not wearing a mask because uh, I told her I'm, I'm fully vaccinated and she was fine with that just to just just to um, explain that to you because I don't want to, to have rumors at the end of the presentation one of the clinical trainer wasn't wearing any mask so it was just kept her impression from professional so um Yes, I'd like to show you how to change uh, the, the hand pieces. And um, as I told you, we have an automatic load detection and we have some kind of magnet inside that is ensuring that it's a very easy change of the hand piece. So I would um, recommend to you to hold this up. So you have to, to press uh, the two buttons in and to release the hand piece, release the hand piece. So uh, I, I will do it again, okay? So and you also can hear the beep. So whenever I'm changing something, the system is going to react to that. So um says, okay, mommy, you have changed the hand piece. I know that. So um I'm changing the hand piece. You see that I push the two buttons here. Here and change it. So like this, it's really, really easy. And I change, uh, I um, push them again, and I'm replacing the other hand piece. And you have uh, the, the beep of the system again. I will go back to that and make the beep here, five millimeter. When we zoom to the display again, it's the beep here. Okay, it automatically recognizes I have a new um, I have a new spot size. So that's really, really easy to use. I can also show you how easy it is to change the spacer. Yes. So you have to you can easily I will do that again. As you might know, it's a very new um, it's a very new system. It has been delivered just a few hours ago, so everything uh, is really new. And uh, you just have to change the space so that. And then you can have a, a proper disinfection or sterilization of the space. Very now we yeah. have two more questions. Um, first one, how do you clean hand pieces to clean patients? Yes, um, most of the time you do um, a wipe, I do a wipe, so um, a wipe disinfection. In, time, uh, in terms, you don't have any bleedings or you know um, there was not a really contact with liquids. Um, but most of the time, I mean, um, the spaces, they fit to every hand piece. So uh, it makes sense to have um, a few spaces there and then to either clean them or change them between um, patients. So that makes sense. But to be honest, most of the um, clinics I know and the doctors, they just do a wide disinfection. And you can use something like that. I will show that to you. You can use something like microsit, um, wipes, um, disinfection wipes, or you can 
or to do something that is um, appropriate for medical devices. Okay, one more question. Uh, what, what size do you recommend to start treating with a full wheel? Small one, for example, two millimeters, or the largest one in order to work faster? Yes, and so in my opinion, it doesn't have something to do with working faster or slower. So um, I will always um, recommend to start with the biggest spot size because at first, you know, um, you don't need that much energy because you have a lot of things, a lot of targets. And so whenever you have a lot of targets um, and you have a fresh tattoo, or yeah, maybe you should, uh, to be honest, you should wait a few months uh, before you start to use the tattoo. As in, so never will work on a way, really, really fresh to you. So, um, start with a bigger soft size um, to create more uh, penetration um, in, in the deeper layers, and you don't need that much spoons. And um, as you proceed with the treatment, you go on to you know, smaller size, smaller soft size, because um, the treatment reckon, um, needs to. To have more fluid. So, whenever you have a small spot size, you're able to uh, be more aggressive in, in terms of fluid. So, that makes sense to start with a, uh, with a bigger spot and then to continue with a smaller one. And also, um, when you are working with uh, a bigger spot size and you're fully on your range, you're, you know, um, you have the, the highest amount of range uh, of fluid. And if you don't create any uh, clinical endpoint anymore, like a drop thing, you should also switch to a smaller spot with a high Thank you. You're welcome. We have one more question. Is it better to treat the big area of tattoo as a small part in every session or to treat the whole area together? So I like this question. This is also um, a uh, very basic question, but um, very, very important. So at least in one session, you should uh, treat a, uh, one of the palmer size. So, um, you know, when you do um, a tutorial where the body has a lot of inflammation and oxygen, um, and um, it's recommended to do several parts um, in different settings. Um, that's the theoretical part of it and the clinical part of it. But um, you also know that true removal is a business. And in business, um, you want to have um, a lot of treatment in a short amount of time to have a lot of patients, to earn a lot of money, to have your uh, return on investment very hard. So in this terms, um, a lot of doctors they do a whole back in one in one session, but then you know um, you have a, a created the wounds uh, on the whole um, back. So this is going to um, let your patient suffer a lot. So I would always recommend to do smaller parts in different uh, sessions. So um, also when we talk about a leg or an arm, you know. Um, it makes sense to um, wherever you have a set of lymphatic drainage to do it in a few sessions. Thank you. So we don't have further questions for the okay. moment, but we have some uh, some congratulations for you and some thank you from thank our you guests. Well. Yeah. It was my pleasure. I know you. We had a lot of um, of um, guests today, so I. Uh, I think it was about 80, right? Yes, so we, uh, we had 70 guests online. Yeah. Okay, so it, it was a pleasure to show you the new dinosaur. Um, and um, I will uh, gain some um, you know, experience with the device over the next two uh, uh, over the next couple of weeks. And uh, of course, I will share my experience with you and we'll have another session as well. Perfect. So from this side, I'd like to thank you as well, even if I don't have the possibility to see all of you. 
and um, I wish you uh, a nice evening or morning or wherever you are on, on the rest of the world and uh, I hope to see you soon. Thank you, Irina. Also, our guests are uh, waving and saying thank you and goodbye. Okay, goodbye. See you. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye, take care. Hết rồi cả nhà ơi.